Hey guys, I'm going to be taking you guys through a week of the meals that I made and hopefully it will give you guys some ideas for your next meal plan. As well as at the beginning of the week, I show you guys how I prep for the drinks and the snacks for the rest of the week. My husband is one of those people who needs to drink something besides water with his meal. So instead of buying pop or juice from the store that has a whole bunch of processed sugar in it. I make my own iced tea at home and I'm going to start that now by adding six bags of black tea to four cups of boiling water and letting that steep for 10 minutes. And then we're going to start on the granola bars. I start off by putting 170 grams of butter in a small pot. We're gonna do 300 grams of sweetener. I'm doing 150 grams of sugar and 150 grams of ice. I used to do this with just maple syrup and then I realized I ran out of maple syrup way too fast so then I was getting this honey so then I did half honey half maple syrup and then I also realized how expensive maple syrup was and I was like you can have that so now I do half honey and half the organic raw sugar and then 170 grams of butter so we're just going to heat this over like a medium heat. So what are we doing now? First we are making the oats. Oh no, we need to throw it in the pot. Yeah, so we're doing four cups of oats. Me too, I put one in there too. I just kind of do like a little bit of salt. Like that. <laughs> I don't ever really measure. I do a cup of salted roasted peanuts and then a cup of walnuts. Now sometimes I run out of walnuts then I'll just do the two cups of peanuts but you can do like any kind of nuts that you want or you can just use the milk too. And now we just mix this with our hands and then I just kind of since the walnuts are pretty big I just kind of press them with my hands a little bit while I'm mixing but it's not really that big of a deal. Last time I made these, I just saved the parchment paper, put it in the fridge, and now I'm just using that same one over again. And the 10 minutes is up for the tea, so I'm just taking the tea bags out. No, we want the other one. Uh, yeah. That's not heavy. Mom, I can just down myself. Ah. Peanut butter, peanut butter. Um, I know how to put the peanut butter in until it's all the zero. Put them. Oh, there's not a lot of peanut butter in there. I think we're actually going to need the other one. After the butter, honey, and sugar is already melted and all bubbly, I put in about a third cup of peanut butter. There definitely wasn't enough peanut butter in this jar, but my baby was crying, and since this is natural peanut butter, I would have to stir all the oils in there to put it in there, and I didn't really have time for that, so I just used what I had. And when the peanut butter was all melted, then I just took it off the heat and poured all the wet ingredients into the dry and mix it all up before pouring it into the pan. So I make these granola bars for my husband for um, a snack for work, but they'd also be really good for school snacks or if you're going hiking and you need just snacks on the go. They are so delicious you could even use it as a dessert. So now we're sprinkling on some chocolate chips on top. And um, I've tried to put them on, like put them in the mixture, but then I just realized that the mixture is really hot. So it just kind of mixes it and melts the, the chocolate chips. Um, so then it just makes chocolate granola bars. 
And I like to cut the parchment paper so there's enough flap on both sides so you can fold it over and then use your hands to press them down. And then I just put them in the fridge to set before I cut them up. So once the sugar is dissolved, I'm adding it to like a big jar like this. I'm just adding half of it. And I put it up to the 16 ounce line. And then the rest of it, I just add to a jar as a concentrate that I'll use after this one is already done and you can it. And I'm gonna fill the rest of this with cold water. I'm going to take about three or four, maybe even, I have five here, maybe I'll just do five um, lemons and I'm just rolling them all out to loosen up all the juices. So the other day I actually made um, a little bit of ginger tea. I just steeped steep some ginger in some water. Um, I didn't, I forgot to put any like sugar or honey in it. Um, and what I really like to do is put some lemon and in like a ginger tea and then just drink it cold. So it's like a cold ginger lemon iced tea. So I'm just going to take the lemon juice and okay, this is actually really cool. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. It changes color when you add lemon juice to it. Let's see. Isn't that really cool? It's like, it turns like pinker. And since I didn't add any sugar to the lemon ginger tea, I'm adding about a quarter cup and then I'm just gonna shake it up. So the first meal we're gonna make is chili and it is a little bit late so I have to like really hurry because we weren't gonna have supper tonight. We're actually going to town so we're gonna have something in town. Um, but then I realized my husband needs food for work tomorrow for lunch. So I'm gonna quickly make the chili now Hopefully I have time because he's like almost home then we have to go to, to town. So I just have a bag of frozen tomatoes and I'm just going to thaw these out and then I'm going to brown the meat right away because I forgot I haven't even done that yet. So I'm taking two pounds of ground venison and I like to season it just with salt. I do I think a teaspoon of salt per pound so I did two teaspoons and then I'm just going to brown half of it in my cast iron skillet and then half of it in my instant pot because it's too much to do all in one pot. And then I'm making the chili in the instant pot so I'm just adding the ground venison that I had in the cast iron skillet into my instant pot. And then I had some cut up green shishito peppers in my freezer. So I just took some of that out and I'm just sauteing that for a little bit just to give it a bit more flavor before I put it into the chili. So I just warmed up these tomatoes in the microwave and now I'm just gonna, I don't really know exactly how much that would be, but it's like this container full. It was about like, like seven big Amish paste tomatoes worth of tomato juice. And I just kind of like squished it up once it's defrosted. So it's kind of like a sauce. So now I'm adding two cans of strained kidney beans, as well as one can of corn and the sauteed peppers. Then to season it, I added a teaspoon of salt and about four tablespoons of chili powder and that's what gives it the really good chili flavor. I'm using store-bought for now 
but I definitely do want to learn how to make my own and then start making my own. I also realized I only had like two tomatoes left, so I just warmed that up as well and put that in there. And then put the slow cooker on for four hours. So it's the next day and I realized that we're almost out of sourdough bread, so I'm gonna feed my starter now, which I realized I don't think I've ever done on a video. I've done a lot of sourdough things, but not really showing you guys how I feed my starter and everything. Maybe I'll do like a more in-depth in depth video of that one day, but for now I just, I don't really do the same amount every single time. I just know that I'm gonna need, I don't know, I'm gonna need at least 200 grams, so I feed it at least 200 grams. So that's 129, and then I'll put 129 grams of water in there, and then that's more than 200, plus what's in there already. So. Whew, this was not a good <laughs> cup to do that with. There you go, that's 139, so I'm making more flour. So when I mix it up, it's like nice and thick. I just take this elastic, I'm gonna put that where it, the top of it is, and then I'm just going to kind of, oh man, roughly close it and I'm gonna put this in my oven. The chili is also ready. It was already ready last night and I gave some to my husband um, for work today but I figured it it was only slow cooking for four hours and I kind of wanted to have more um, of a flavor so I just did it for another five hours during the night um, and then it just keeps it warm until morning so now I'm just going to scoop it into some containers and we won't eat this all now so I'll probably just um, freeze it and since my husband had it for lunch today he probably won't want it for supper so i'm going to be making the next meal which is a bean soup that i've never actually made before but i'm gonna kind of experiment and see how it tastes i actually haven't even tried this yet so i'm probably gonna have some I topped the chili with some shredded cheese and sour cream and ate that with some toasted sourdough bread and it was delicious. I didn't get around to cutting up the granola bars yesterday so I'm just doing that now and then I take two granola bars and wrap them in a plastic wrap together because my husband takes two of them to work. It's been about a little bit more than three hours and I mean, see it's right there now so it's more than doubled um so I think it's Good to go, nice and bubbly. So now I'm gonna start with bread. So now I'm going to start with the bean soup. I've never made this recipe before. I kind of just um, looked up a recipe on Pinterest and ew, that's rotten on the inside. So I have a couple recipes that I'm going off of um, from Pinterest and I just kind of like put them both together and kind of in my own recipe and then I'm going to try it out and see how it tastes. If you're wondering what I always use to fry everything or like to cook something on the, the pan, it's bacon fat. Um, I always use bacon fat because I feel like it just gives a really good flavor and my parents eat bacon all the time so 
they just save the bacon fat and I take it from them. <laughs> so I had some cut up celery in the freezer and so I wanted to cook that first because I wanted the celery to be nice and soft before I added everything else in because I don't like uncooked celery. So I made sure that was cooked first and then added in the onions. While those were cooking, I opened three cans of white kidney beans and added one can to a blender cup to blend that up with some water so that the soup would be more creamy. And now when I let my sourdough dough rest for 30 minutes, I'm adding the salt. I usually don't do it, I add it all in at once, but I thought I would try it to see if it made a difference and I can't say that it does. So to the pot, I added the garlic and let that cook for a minute. And then I add in about three cups of chicken broth, plus the pureed beans and then the whole beans as well. And then for the seasonings, I added a teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper. And then I had a little bit of homegrown dried rosemary and I just crushed that up and put that in as well. So one of the recipes had kale in it, one of them didn't, and I figured I would try it with the kale because extra greens, so you get some more um, health benefits to it. Um, but next time I make it, I won't do that. I definitely recommend not adding it unless you really, really love kale. I do love kale, but I felt like it just didn't belong in this soup. It gave it a little bit of a funny flavor, and it was just leafy that's really hot it's pretty good i think i still need some salt though and i think it would taste pretty good with like some spice to it like red chili flakes or like cayenne pepper and one of the recipes um said to put some parmesan cheese in it and i think that would make this really 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 good i just don't have parmesan cheese but it's not bad it's it's pretty good i think it'd be really good with some bread so i'm gonna toast some bread now all right it's the next day and we are going to make the next meal which is a very very easy meal and that's pumpkin the hardest part about this recipe is just cutting up and sauteing. Um, and if you don't want to do that, you can just use onion powder. <laughs> also, I don't think I did this last time, but I'm going to put some garlic in it. I think I want to make some sourdough garlic bread because I realized I had never done that before. And I don't know why. It would be so easy to make. So we're going to make some garlic butter. And then the sourdough bread is actually baking in the oven right now. So we can have fresh bread to make that garlic bread with. Okay, so I'm just going to take a cup of pumpkin puree. So you can do any type of pasta you like, but I just bought this stuff um, the other day, so I'm just going to do some of this. I actually have no idea how much pasta I put in that water. I never measure. I probably should. So I know how much goes with the sauce. I just kind of like add the noodles and the sauce together until the amount of noodles and sauce together are the way that I like it. <laughs> and if I like have too much sauce, then I'll just make some more pasta. So I always take some of the pasta water and add it to the cottage cheese and pumpkin puree to blend it up 
because it needs to have a little bit of liquid in it to blend it up nicely. And then I add some pepper and a little bit of nutmeg. I didn't add any salt because the pasta water was pretty salty, so I'm just going to add in salt later if it needs it. And I'm just adding in those um, sautéed onions and a little bit of garlic powder because I forgot to sauté the garlic. And then I blended it up, put it all back in the cast iron skillet, added the pasta, and that's it. My favorite way to eat this is with some barbecue pulled goose, but you could also do pulled pork. And then I also add in some fermented pepper salsa, I guess it would be called. It's just all the ingredients that you would use to make a hot sauce fermented, and then instead of blending it up and adding vinegar, you just use it like that, and it's delicious. I realized that was only three meals, but on the Monday we went out to eat and then some of the days we just had leftovers and Friday we had our pasta couple over and I just took out that chili that I made at the beginning of the week and I froze, took it out of the freezer and we had that for supper with them. And then on Saturday we just made some sandwiches with the sourdough bread and then the rest of the time we just had leftovers. So really you don't need to make a meal every single day. You can if you want, sometimes I do. Sometimes I just like to make big batches of things and then have leftovers and just like kind of eat it in a different way. Or I make a big batch of meat, like pulled venison or pulled goose. And then I can eat it in different ways with like barbecue sauce in sandwiches. Or you can like put it in some sort of a creamy red sauce and over like rice or potatoes or something. Or like I did in this video, you can use the barbecue pulled goose and put it in pasta. Any type of creamy pasta is really really good with like that barbecue-y flavor. But that is all. I hope you guys got some ideas for your next meal plan and if you guys have recipes that you really really love that you guys go to all the time, definitely leave them in the comments because I'm always looking for new recipes. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great week. See you next time.